Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Kelly and I am a printmaker and an illustrator based in Seoul. And a while back I showed you guys how I make a small zine in 24 hours. So I thought I would show you how I make prints like these in the Silkscreen Studio. A lot of artists print their illustrations using a digital printer, which is a really convenient way to print. But I really fell in love with silkscreen printing as a way to produce work a couple of years ago, and I would love to recommend that. You can create neon colors, metallic colors, a lot of effects that you can't create with digital printing. And also, it teaches you a lot about your approach to illustration when you have to print your final piece in layers. It definitely has had a big influence over the way that I draw and illustrate. Even when I'm making images in Procreate, I always think about how I could print it. And so it really affects the way that I layer color. And yeah, there's just a lot of cool effects that you can create with silkscreen printing. So I would love to share how I do that today and hopefully inspire some of you to print, whether that's at your house or at a studio nearby your house. Yeah, so let's jump into making these prints. The first thing that I do when I'm about to print something is I prepare all of my layers. So for silkscreen printing, you're going to need to make these positives. So it's an acetate, a clear piece of plastic basically, that you print a layer of black on. So in order to make these positives, I need to turn all of my color layers black and I need to add registration marks. So usually I just do this in Photoshop, but you can also do it in Procreate by adding a clipping mask in black and just merging that and then you have your black layer. And you could see how this would definitely affect your workflow as well because if you're creating an image to silkscreen print, you have to think about what layers of color you're gonna need, how they're going to overlap, and hopefully already have them separated by color. So for this piece, I have six colors. So when I was illustrating, I already had six layers from the green to the blues and the teal. They were already separated. So it just made my job a lot easier when it came to making the acetates. So in the studio, the first thing that I need to do is coat my screens. As I already mentioned, I have six layers of color. So that means I need six screens and I just coat them with a layer of emulsion. So this is a photosensitive emulsion that gets harder when you expose it to UV light. So for the time being, I just wanna coat it. I don't wanna expose it to any light. So if you are doing this at home, you need a dark, dim place to dry your screens. So then you have to wait for it to dry, which can take quite a few hours. So usually while I'm waiting, I go ahead and print my acetates with the inkjet printer. So I have all my acetates, my screens are dry. Now I get to expose my screens to the UV light. There are a couple of methods to do this at home, but at the studio, we just use this kind of vacuum UV light table. So I just put my acetates in there, put my screen on top, make sure it's all secured, and then I turn on the UV light for around two minutes. So this is definitely one benefit to going to a studio is they already have everything set up for you and a lot of times you can rent the space for a day or you could take a class where they will also show you how to do everything. So my screens are exposed, then I wash them out. Water basically, gets rid of the positive part, the part that was black, you can blast out of your screen and then you are ready to print. The first thing I have to do is registration. So registration basically means you are lining everything up to be in the same place. Sometimes it's really tempting to just do this quickly and get on with it, but I really recommend just spending the extra couple minutes to get the registration right. We like to use the pin and tab method to help with this. So that's basically where 
I'll show you the tabs. You use little tabs like this. There are these plastic pieces with just a hole punched in them. And then you have pins, which are a metal piece that have a little thing sticking out of them that you can attach this to. So basically, when I have the pins like this, it's going to hold my paper in place. And if I do that to all my sheets of paper, so they're all the same, then that means my image is gonna always print in the same place pretty reliably. So that's one thing that will make registration a lot easier and will prevent um, you making mistakes with the registration. Another thing is just to take the extra time to make sure your crosses are lining up. Um, when I register, I always make a registration sheet. So I have one extra piece of paper that just has an acetate taped onto it. And I use that piece of paper for every single color that I'm going to print. That gives you consistency so you're always lining it up using the same um, parameters. I just screw in my screen first and instead of trying to move the screen around, I just move my paper around. And when it looks good, I use tape to tape down the metal pins and then it's done. So I can print all of my colors. When it comes to colors, this is something that I really love about silkscreen printing because you get a wide range of colors. If you just buy Speedball or something, they have a lot to choose from, but you can always mix your own colors too, which gives a lot more customization and you can layer colors on top of each other, create interesting effects that you can't really do with a digital printer. And it adds some texture too when you're printing these layers on top of one another. For this piece, I used six colors and a lot of them had transparency too because I kind of wanted this Rizzo effect where you get um, almost a multiply um, blending mode out of layering like blue and red. So I added some extender to a couple of the inks, like the lighter blues and I think the dark blue as well, just to give them some transparency and to let them overlap on top of the other ink colors. And I definitely recommend experimenting with some neon colors or metallics. In the past, I've also created mixed editions, which are you are printing the same image, but maybe you change the color scheme or something. So if you're indecisive like me, you can have a lot of options to create different versions of your image, just using different colors and the same screens. So when I'm printing the colors, this is where I run into some common problems. So for this piece in particular, I did have an issue with some bleeding and that's where the ink is bleeding outside of the lines, outside of the area that is supposed to be printed. You can add a little bit of off contact so that your screen isn't sticking to the image and so that it comes up um, more easily when you're printing. You can also make sure you're not flooding too much. So whenever you're printing, you pool and you flood. So when I'm pooling is when I'm depositing ink and then when I'm flooding is when I'm just putting a light layer of ink on the screen so that it doesn't dry out. So just make sure you're not flooding too much because if you're putting too much ink in the flood, then when you pull, there's gonna be too much ink and it's not gonna have anywhere to go except for outside the lines. Clogging is another issue, which I didn't run into with this piece, but I have in the past. And that can be because your environment is too dry or you might not be flooding your screen well enough and maybe the ink on your screen could dry out a little bit so be careful with that as well when you're done printing every single colored layer then it's time to finish up and i usually take my prints home to edition them or sometimes i'll edition them at the studio and I can also use a ruler and just an X-Acto knife to trim the edges. Um, when I'm ordering an addition to, I usually try to order it from 
The first image in the edition is the one I think is the best, but I try to keep them within the same range. Like there's not big differences within the images themselves. And then anything outside of that is just an artist's proof. So it's not a part of the edition, it's just an extra one. And with those, I give them away to friends or I just keep them for my records. I usually do edition in the left-hand corner, title in the middle, and then sign on the right-hand corner. And that is pretty much it. I hope that motivated some of you to try out screen printing. If you are in Seoul, you can check out Mini Print, which is the studio where I go to. Yeah, and if you're somewhere else, there are definitely silkscreen studios all around the world that you could check out. But don't underestimate doing some prints at home as well. There's some kits you can buy, and if you're just making a one or two layer print, that could be something that's definitely plausible to do in your house. No matter what skill level you are or where you are, screen printing is definitely something you can give a try, and I definitely recommend it. Until next time, I will see you guys soon, and have a great day. Bye.